from Caracas, Venezuela. My name is Reagan Veens and this is from the South, Telesu English's daily news brief. We start in New York where the United Nations 72nd General Assembly continues. It's also from where Cuba's Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez made regional headlines after his address to world leaders. He called on the international community to make the recovery efforts in the Caribbean their highest priority after the destruction caused by the hurricanes Irma and Maria. Rodriguez also responded to U.S. President Donald Trump, who has decided to intensify the blockade against Cuba. What is this miraculous recipe that President Donald Trump recommends to us in the absence of the financial flows of the Marshall Plan? Who will contribute resources for that purpose? And how can this be reconciled with the idea advanced by President Reagan years ago and Trump now, the idea of America first. President Trump ignores and distorts history and portrays a pipe dream as a goal to be pursued. The very production and consumption patterns of neoliberal capitalism are unsustainable and irrational and will inex inexorably lead to the destruction of the environment and to the end of the human species. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro was greeted by his Cuban counterpart Raul Castro in Havana on his trip to deliver aid for the hurricane victims. Maduro arrived at the Jose Marti airport in the country's capital around midnight on Friday morning along with his wife, First Lady Celia Flores. They were also received by the first Vice President of the State's Council and Ministers, Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez. In Barbuda, close to 2,000 residents have been forced to leave the island and take shelter in neighboring Antigua after Hurricane Irma struck just two weeks ago. Some are currently staying in a shelter previously used as a cricket field, many still visibly affected by the disaster. The residents are being provided with three meals daily, but their mental health is also being addressed. The shelter is offering counseling to all. We have on a regular basis counselors who comes in and have sessions with, with, with those who are here. So, because um, on, the, on the outside, one might look as if everything is, is good, but we don't know what is going on on the inside. And so, with the help of these psychologists and counsellors, yes, we will get what is really happening to them and be able to, to treat them accordingly. And on Wednesday night, Antigua and Barbados Prime Minister Gaston Brown spoke at the United Nations General Assembly. He criticized the international financial system for making it more difficult for a nation like his to rebuild after a disaster like Hurricane Irma. Here is what he said in an exclusive interview with Telesur. The per capita criterion should be scrapped in its entirety. It should be scrapped immediately. I also believe, too, that this idea of graduating small states, states that are very vulnerable, some states which can't even pay the debts or barely paying the debts to graduate them and to preclude them from developmental financing is punitive and I think too that that policy should be discontinued that small countries should be able to borrow just like large wealthy countries at concessional rates in fact in the case of large, large wealthy countries they can borrow in the stock markets at three percent why are you creating an architecture in which vulnerable small island states have to borrow at 10% and 12%. All it does is to increase our debt overhang and make our development more onerous. Hurricane Maria passed over the Dominican Republic, causing severe flooding and damage, especially towards the east of the country. Intense rain battered the island, increasing the flooding in rural and urban areas. The Emergency Operations Center ordered a mandatory evacuation in 26 of the 32 provinces, leaving thousands displaced, many still without power. Maria is still currently a Category 3 storm with winds of 185 kilometers per hour. She's on her way now to the Turks and Caicos Islands. In Mexico, the number of victims after Tuesday's 7.1 magnitude earthquake has risen to 286. That's according to National Coordinator of Civil Protection, Luis Felipe Puente. The breakdown, according to the official, 148 victims in Mexico City, 73 in Morelos, 45 in Puebla, 13 in the Mexican state, 6 in Guerrero and 1 in Oaxaca. This figure is still expected to rise as rescue efforts are ongoing. In other news, at least 120 flights have been cancelled after roughly 700 Avianca pilots went on strike, that's a Colombian airline, 
Other workers joined the demonstration to protest the lack of media coverage. The two-day strike has left over 20,000 passengers stranded in Bogota's El Dorado airport and other terminals around the country. The pilots are demanding shorter shifts and better wages. Airport workers also taking part are demanding proper labor contracts with the benefits stipulated in Colombian labor laws. Villagers in the Peruvian Amazon have shut down at least 50 oil wells operated by the Frontera Energy Corp to protest talks over a new contract. It's the latest protest in a region long plagued by complaints of oil pollution. This comes after the centre-right government of President Pedro Pablo Kuczynski declined to apply an indigenous rights law as it negotiates with Frontera. Sibling of missing activist Santiago Maldonado has written a song to demand his brother's return. A number of Argentine musical personalities lend their talents to the song. Maldonado disappeared during a military police eviction of the indigenous Mapuche people in Cushamen over 40 days ago. The Mapuche were and still are demanding that the Argentine government return land handed over to Italian clothing company Benetton. And before we close, early in the show, we updated you on Mexico's recent devastating earthquake. Well, here at Telesu, we take a look at the remarkable show of humanity and solidarity displayed by regular people in supporting relief and rescue efforts in the capital city. We spoke to a brigade of Central American immigrants who were helping despite the racism and the discrimination that they face in Mexico. You can head to our website to see them in action. And to stay updated on these and other stories, take a look at our website, telesurtv.net slash English, and join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Regan Evans. Have a great weekend.